afternoon. All right, so the series and the balance, the game just about ready to start. Let's get up to the booth. Men calling the game. It's Dave Sims and Mike Flowers. Guys, isn't it nice to be able to talk not just great defense with Brendan Ryan, but also talk some offense with this guy? Absolutely, Brett. Good afternoon, guys, and good afternoon, everybody. Brendan Ryan, indeed, comes up big last night with a game-winning RBI. Good for him. Maybe that's the start of a nice little run for him coming off of last night so hopefully that's going to work out well for the Mariners well I think that you're right Brennan is so important to this club and the biggest reason why is his defense spectacular play again last night you can see how far he had to range up the middle to even get to this ball looked like it was a base hit the quick turn the accurate throw again from Brendan Ryan but he does so much for his pitchers but offensively you go back and you look at his road trip he had a fine road trip so I think things hopefully are carrying over Brendan it was a great at bat for him I like the fact that he was able to handle a 3-2 slider in that situation and hit it hard back up the middle to drive in the winning run. So, Brennan, it wasn't just last night, but he's been trending to this. Just need to see more of it as he moves forward. But he's really important to this club. I'll tell you, guys, he's been trending and trending upward mm. with several bullets. Tom Wilhelmson, I love it when he gets to say, last call and closing time with the bartender coming on. Well, Tom had the great outing in Chicago where he had to pitch a couple of innings. The Mariners come back and win that game, and since that point, he's given just about unhittable, just outstanding, overpowering stuff from Will Helmson. Again, his fastball at 97, 98 miles an hour. Here's a late swing, easy ground ball for Seager to handle. But he also, I think the biggest thing is the curveball. Here you go. That ends the game. He has the best 12-6 curveball, in my opinion, in the business. And when you can back that up with 97 miles an hour, you have something special, and that's what Tom has been. Chance for the Mariners to get this series against the Athletics, and we'll see how things materialize. We've got a great day here. Glad you're with us. And, hey, if you're in the neighborhood, drop on by. It's the Mariners and the Athletics. Final game of this series as this homestand getting underway. Glad you're with us. Oakland at Seattle. First pitch is straight ahead. Seattle Mariners baseball on Root Sports, brought to you by Banner Bank. Better ideas, better banking. By CenturyLink, 
a different kind of communications company, CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by the Emerald Queen Casino, Cowboy Rock with Ronnie Dunn of Brooks and Dunn, July 28th. For tickets, go to emeraldqueen.com. Nice shot of Elliot Bay there. The water taxi taking you from downtown to South Seattle. I think probably There's here. Boat. That's, That's the what boat I was we were thinking. looking yeah, for. Brad, Adam, and Dave Value with you. <laughs> we said it was a boat day today, but we don't have a boat. So the I guess we can't find a do. The ferry <laughs> just back and forth, back and forth. All right, let's talk about the pitching matchup tonight. Our Lexus pitching matchup. It is Kevin Millwood on the mound looking to bounce back after his last start there in San Diego. Against Jared Parker, 3-3 three and three with a 2-7 his last start. Last two starts, he's given up just one run. But on the Mariners' side, Val, let's talk Millwood, the veteran. 3-6, and six, they get banged around by the Padres. What does he need to do differently tonight to get back in the win column? Well, Kevin has been really struggling lately. He is winless in his last five starts. Gave up eight runs, five of them earned down in San Diego. But the problem in San Diego was this, and he had alluded to this. Everything was elevated in the strike zone. He cannot live waist high and above. He's got to be able to get that ball down and work both sides of the plate. But the good news is this. It's a day game, right? Right. So Kevin Millwood made sure that he had a good breakfast and, you know, there's a good chance that he had some liver mush this oh, morning man. before the game, and that's a good sign for Kevin Millwood. Just coat the stomach and get him ready for the start. Just don't ask what's in liver mush. You can probably guess what's in liver mush. All right, A's and Mariners coming up. Series in the balance. Lineup's first pitch next here on Root Sports. Beautiful day to be on I-5 southbound towards Safeco Field today. The Mariners look to take the series from the Oakland Athletics after a dramatic win last night, 3-2. to two. And here you are at Safeco Field under gorgeous blue skies. Mariner baseball on your TV from Seattle, Washington. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, and the Root Sports crew. Look at this vantage point from the Diamond Club right behind home plate. Kevin Millwood. Looking for his first win in 35 days. Coco Crisp to lead off. First pitch up high, ball one. Home plate umpire, Dan Ayasaka. C.B. Buckner at first, Bill Miller at second, and Dale Scott at third. 61 degrees here in Seattle. Wind out of the northwest at four. Well hit deep to right. Ichiro back, and that ball's gone. 
Coco Crisp on a 1 0 pitch puts Oakland in front 1 0. That's his second career home run against Millwood for the season, his second home run, and RBI number 15. Dave Valley was talking about it in the pregame, and we've seen it the last few starts for Millwood. Got to keep that ball down. Yeah, this ball is up in the middle of the plate. Again, Kevin with the leadoff hitter, Crisp, hitting, just wants to get ahead of him, trying to find a way to get a strike. Miss with the first pitch, and Coco Chris jumping on that last pitch, hitting it into the seats in right field. 350 feet worth of home run, 1 0 A's. Next hitter is Cliff Pennington, the shortstop. Pennington had been hitting down in the lineup in this series, but moves up to hitting second weeks, getting the afternoon off. So Pennington will hit second for the A's. That was a good fastball. Last pitch located down in the zone. Kevin's had a lot of success when he's able to get the ball down there. He can mix in his cutter and a slider to go along with the good two-seam fastball. Just the second home run Millwood's given up here safe goal field this season. Fly ball left field. Saunders with the glasses on makes the catch. Take a look at the rest of the Oakland A's batting order. Manager Bob Melvin hitting third will be Josh Reddick. 17 home runs on the year for Reddick. And then a Cespedes, Smith, Inge, Brandon Moss, young first baseman recently called up. You can see he's hit seven home runs in the month of June. So you have to be careful with him. Then it's Hicks. Suzuki with the night off last night back in the lineup today. He will do the catching and hit ninth. Numbers for Kevin Millwood. Under the gun in his last outing. Eric Wedge needing him to eat some innings up for him. The bullpen was shot after the trip into Arizona. So Kevin took that one on the chin. Hopefully he can bounce back and have a good game today. He's really pitched well this year. He's had unbelievable streaks at times where he's put just some terrific games together and worked deep, taking some of the pressure off of the pen. So hopefully that will be the case again today. Millwood looking for a second win here at home. He's one and two with a 5 4 6 ERA. One and one to count to Josh Reddick. He's the guy you got to stop in this Oakland A's offensive unit. 17 homers, 38 RBI. Amazing runs, hits, total bases, and batting average. And the Mariners pitching overall has really done a good job against him in this series. He hasn't had a hit in the series. Hopefully that trend will continue. Ball and two strikes. A run in, one out. Up and in. Redick has really emerged as a quality hitter. Tenth in runs scored. Top ten in home runs with 17. Top ten in hits. Check that. That's in uh, triples, I should say. Two and two. Swing and a miss. He's gone. Two outs. Take a look at the defense playing behind Kevin in this afternoon's ball game. In the outfield, Saunders is in left field. Frank with good ears. Good sign for him to bounce back and play center field in this day game. Ichiro out and right on the infield. Seeger at third. Ryan. More great defense from him last night at shortstop. Ackley and Smoke on the right side of the infield. John Chaso, he will get the call behind the plate tonight or this afternoon. Kevin's last start, you can see it was a struggle for him, giving up eight hits, three walks, five runs. Or, excuse me, eight runs. Five of those runs earned. 94 pitches to get through the five innings. Strike one to Uenis Cespedes, the DH today. He was back in the outfield for the first time a couple of weeks. Last night's contest, he went one for three, hit a home run in the seventh inning. Great win by the Mariners last night and a much-needed outstanding starting pitching performance by Jason Vargas. Eric Witch couldn't say enough about him this morning. But Vargas had a great bullpen session coming off the getting uh, racked around at Arizona. Really pinpointing his fastball. And work and selling the changeup, which uh, both were very effective pitches for Vargas last night. 1 1. Popped up. Each row coming on. And that'll do it. So, leadoff homer by Coco Chris as the A's in front. 1 0 as the Mariners come to bat on this sunny Wednesday afternoon here in Seattle.
For some Mariner baseball, one nothing A's. Let's take a look at the Mariner batting order for today. This afternoon starting lineups brought to you by Chevron. Each row leading things off again. A good sign seeing Franklin Gutierrez in the lineup. He must be feeling well playing here in the day game. And the Seager Montero Saunders moving up, hitting fifth. Jaso he will hit six. Smoke Ackley. Brendan Ryan has really swung the bat well lately over the last ten games. Brendan Ryan hitting 323. Take a look at the numbers for Jared Parker on the air. He's pitched well, 2.70 ERA for the A's. Ichiro, first pitch, line drive, right field to Reddick. And for Parker, came over in the Trevor Cahill trade. Arizona is a young man that actually threw about 97, 98 miles an hour. Now it's fastball. Had an injury a couple of years ago. It's fastball at 92, 94. Great changeup. That's his best pitch. That's his out pitch. We'll mix in it. A slider and a curveball, but he's basically going to be a fastball changeup type of pitcher. That shoulder injury a couple of years ago necessitated him coming up with the changeup, and he sells it just like Vargas did yesterday. So it's said to be one of the better changeups from a right hander in the American League as Gutierrez looks at a strike. Which really is impressive when you think of a young pitcher that was used to throwing 97 miles an hour, or having an injury, and being able to come up with a changeup, but probably a totally opposite of the way he's always pitched and to get it quickly and have the success that he's had this year. That's impressive. Yep. Franklin Gutierrez, one for four last night. He had a double and an RBI. Just missed a home run, hit it off the top of the fence and left center field. He continues to swing the bat well, hitting 282 overall. Parker has been impressive. Bob Melvin, manager of this ball club, says he's a high ceiling guy. We thought so much of him. They traded Trevor Cahill to bring him over to Oakland. Strike three called. Punched out with the left hand by Dan Iasaka. Two down. Take a look at the defense for the A's in this afternoon's game. They played good defense in this series. Smith in left field, Coco Crisp out in center field. Josh Reddick robbing a couple of hits in last night's game out and right. And Brandon Inge. Former Tiger at third base, Pennington and Hicks will play at the middle. Moss, the young first baseman, will get the call this afternoon. And Kurt Suzuki had last night off, but back behind the dish in this afternoon's game. Here's Kyle Seager, 0 for 3, looking for his first hit here in the series, 0 for his last seven. Thought he hit the ball well last night. Kyle trying to get things going, but he hit a fly ball, just missed a, a, a ball, and hit it out to right field. Had a sacrifice fly that he hit right on the button, but unfortunately it was at Reddick in right field also. A couple more flyouts, but I thought he swung the bat well last night, so hopefully that'll translate into some hits for him this afternoon. Doubles in RBI leader for the Mariners. Was a top batting average guy for about, what, week 10 days? Yeah. And his average pushing up around 280. Two and one from Parker. Three and one. Montero, the DH waiting on deck. Full count here. Kyle Seager, two outs in the first. Bob Melvin, first full year with the Athletics. Lead Bob Guerin. About 63 games into last year's season. Parker at a Fort Wayne, Indiana. It's Eric Wedge country. Seager draws a walk. Bring up Jesus Montero. Montero one for three yesterday, three for seven in the series. As you look at the batting average against for Parker, left handers hitting 220, right handers hitting just 207. One to Montero. 
to splits on Montero, what he's done against left-handers and struggled a little bit against the right. He's at first pitch breaking ball. I'm sure he'll see a steady diet of that. That's been the trend for Jesus. They try to throw fastballs in on him, move his feet around, and then get him out with the breaking ball away. It's fairly typical when you're a young player. Owen one. Pitch camera from Parker. Parker for three consecutive seasons. Was the Diamondbacks top prospect according to Baseball America. It's the entire 2010 season. In addition to some shoulder problems he had the Tommy John surgery. And with those credentials that's the reason why the A's feel like he has a high ceiling. I think so many times you see guys they come back and they end up regaining that fastball and I think that their hope is is that after a couple of years that that fastball will start to jump up again for him and get him in that 95 mile an hour range to take a look at his pitching arsenal a lot of four seam fastballs up in the zone there's the change up at 21 percent check swing Parker's been top of the barrel guy for a top of heap guy for a long time coming out of high school Indiana Mr. Baseball, Louisville Slugger State High School Player of the Year, Gatorade Player of the Year, Conference Player of the Year. Melvin. Thrilled to have him in the rotation. He's got a 1 2 count here to Montero. Runner goes. It's inside. And no throw by Suzuki. Stolen base seeker, his seventh. And Kyle picks a good pitch to run on. It's a changeup, only 80 miles an hour. You can see Suzuki coming out of the crouch, looks up and knows that he doesn't have a chance to get Kyle, so he just eats it. No throw down to second. Mariners in last night's ball game, two for five with runners in scoring position. 2-2 two -two to Montero. Down low, Suzuki keeps it in front of him. Full count. Two outs, Seeger in scoring position. Mariners on the season. As you look at Michael Saunders, runners in scoring position, batting average up to 240. He's down in two teens for a long time. Payoff to Montero off the end of the bat. Coco Crisp led off the ballgame with a home run. He's leading. One nothing. Mariners try to get right back here in their first inning. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming up to Montero. Good fastball in the outside corner, able to spoil it. First time the Mariners are seeing young Jared Parker. Parker would be 24 right around Thanksgiving on November 24th. Three two pitch breaking ball got him. That'll do it for the Mariners in the first they leave Seeger at second base to the second inning we go A's up one nothing.
Seattle Mariners baseball on Root Sports. Being brought to you by Pizza Hut. Say goodbye to boring with Pizza Low. Two for five bucks only at your Pizza Hut. Make it great. And by Ford. We are local. Look at the jet contrails up top. Good news, it was one of our jets. Grew up during the uh, Cold War years. Sometimes you'd look up and go, uh oh. Dave Sims like flowers here. Nothing like some of that good old 50s paranoia. <laughs> One nothing on a Coco Crisp home run. Here's Seth Smith. We learned night one. He will look and I let it. <laughs> you put it well. He'll hunt that fastball. <laughs> a phrase that Eric Wedge likes to use a lot. And a couple of off-speed pitches to him to start. Kevin Millwood understanding that. Oh, yeah. And Smith, I think a big part of the reason why Smith is that way is because he was a pinch hitter for the Rockies for a period of time. And that's one of the things that you learn coming off the bench. Get that first heater if you can and take a hack at it. But Sit breaking ball, took a fastball for called strike three. Two strikeouts for Millwood. A couple of off-speed pitches. And then you take a look at this pitch. Tremendous move. That's actually, I think, the first pitch of the mm -hmm. at-bat. It's great. You see the rotation of the ball. Well, now, maybe the first time in baseball history, certainly any time I've been doing baseball, we'll have three consecutive Brendans coming up now. Call Elias Sports Bureau. When was the last time we had three Brendans on one team? Another four in the game. Brendan Inns, Brendan Moss, Brendan Hicks, and our own Brendan Ryan. Jeez. May as well get Brandon League out there on the basketball team. It is Brendan, but I'm including Brendan Ryan, but I'm including. I think that's it. fair. Yeah. Inch been uh, pretty productive with Oakland, 235. Six homers, 33 RBIs, sitting about a buck 90. With Detroit when they cut them loose, one two pitch. Ideal conditions, wind not too much of a factor at all. Light. Lazy breeze coming in from left field. 2 2. And Joe for four last night. There's a couple of grand slams on the season. It's helped his RBI total. If you look at his RBIs, he has 33 hits, 35 RBIs. 2 2 pitch coming. Inge. Against Kevin Millwood, seven for 37. Millwood looking for his first win against the Athletics since September 21 of 09 at Oakland. Career is six and four with a 3.72 ERA against Oakland. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Boston Red Sox come to town tomorrow. Red Sox right now top eight in Boston. They're going to have to fly all the way across I-90. They lead 10-4 against Toronto. Red Sox six and a half games behind New York. Got a full count here to Inge. Yankees 5-3. Top of the ninth over Cleveland. On deck hitter, Brandon Moss, the first baseman. Seeger gets a nice hop. Goes out the A's third baseman for out number two. Here in the second inning this year, the Mariners are proud to induct Randy Johnson and Dan Wilson into the Mariners Hall of Fame. And we want you to share in a celebration. Join Jay Buner, Alvin Davis, Edgar Martinez, and other special guests for the Hall of Fame luncheon. That's this Friday, July 27th, right here at Safeco Field. And it's on field. This luncheon is going to be filled with great moments. 
from the memorable careers of Randy and Dan. So for more information, go to Mariners.com slash HOF. It's where he went, Rico, working with Rick Riz on the radio side with Kevin Kremen. Ball one to Moss, the first baseman. That's 233, seven homers, 12 runs batted in. Played in the first game of the series, went one for three with a single. He's won the first game, one nothing. Mariners last night, 3 2. A bit slow on the batting average side, hitting 233, but just 60 at bats. And 60 at bats, he has seven home runs. And 14 hits overall, and 10 of those for extra bases. So he's been productive when he puts the ball in play. 2 1. Different from Derek Barton, who manned first base for the last few years. And human base on balls. Always was amazing to me. We knew it going into the series, he was going to sit up there and take till he had two strikes. And he always seemed to get a walk or two in just about every game. Billy Bean philosophy. Getting on base. Yeah, that's changing a little bit because you see the A's are stealing bases now. Billy was a big proponent of not giving away out, so he didn't want to steal or bunt. And things have changed a little bit. They're running now. 3 2 pitch. Strike three call. So 1 2 3. Second inning thrown by Kevin Millwood. He's got three strikeouts in the first two innings. Good luck at the swing and miss right there. Mariners down, one nothing. Saunders, Jaso, and Smoke coming up. Got all the colors, got the sunglasses. They're happy. You gotta like that. Michael Saunders leads off, looks at ball one. Saunders, Jaso, and Smoke here in the second. And Jared Parker, two strikeouts in the first inning. Mariners got Seeger to second on a walk and a stolen base, couldn't score. One on one to Saunders. Michael O for three last night, one for seven, first two games. Saunders so stolen base leader for the Mariners with 12. This one fouled back. This well, seeing, seeing Kyle Seeger run in the first inning, I think that's something that Eric Wedge is going to want to do. We're, Saw him try to run a little bit in the series so far. Blackley shut it down because of the move that he had at first, the left hander. But other than that, if they get a chance, I think they're going to try to be aggressive on the bases. That they will. It's 
talking to Mike Brumley before the game. I said, what did you think of Blackley's move last night? He said, it's better than Pettit and Burley. So it puts him at the top of the heap. That's saying a lot. I mean, that's you're better than those two guys. I hit a Mariners running game in reverse last night. One, two, swinging a minute. Saunders gone. Third strike yet, two in a row. Let's check it with Tom Blasco. Tommy, what do you have? Dave from the Ford Sports Desk. Let's head to Minnesota. The Twins taking on the White Sox. Kevin Euclid has traded in his Red Sox for White Sox. Still has some pop in the bat, though. He'll send a baseball deep to right center. That's going to score Eduardo Escobar. Euclid trying to stretch the double to a triple. You know, he left Boston with a triple. Hey, he's out there, so it ends up as a double. Twins get the win. Check it. White Sox get the win, 12 to 5. Sterling Banks score. And there you have it, a John Jaso home run, tying the ball game at 1-1. John Jaso with a homer, his third RBI number 17. A couple of home runs for the scores thus far here in under the sun in Seattle. And for Jaso being aggressive. Watching Parker get ahead of the hitters with fastballs. Take a look at our McDonald's Super Bowl as this fastball at 91 miles an hour runs back to the middle of the plate. Full extension, head down on the ball, and barrels it up. Tie this game up with a solo home run. First pitch, he hit at 381 feet. There's Justin Smoke down in the seven hole right now. It has been. A struggle. He's 0 for his last six. And bigger picture, 0 for his last 13. Well, I, I think that when you look at it, I, I like the fact that Eric Wedge, and he's done this before, is moving down the line and trying to take some pressure off of him. He's done the same thing with Ackley. Ackley hitting eighth today. We try to get these guys going, move them around the lineup a little bit, see if that can help them get a few more hits and Maybe be a little more aggressive early in counts, which is exactly what Justin was. And he'll strike out swinging, but they have to find a way to get him moving in the right direction again. Wasn't that long ago? He was the player of the week in the American League. That was from uh, the stretch of May 28th through June 3rd. Two down, a run in. Strikeout number four for Parker. Exactly. Strike. Indicated by Dan Iasonka. That home run given up by Parker is the third he's given up, and this is 12th game. Actually, one for three yesterday, two for six in the first two games. Justin with four homers, 23 runs batted in. Last time he went yard was at Texas on May 30th. Got a 2 1 count. 2 2. Well, we hear Carl Willis talking about his pitchers and saying throwing pitches with conviction. I think that's what we're seeing from Parker with that changeup. You're right, Dave. He absolutely sells it, so the guys are going to have to try to find a way to make an adjustment to the changeup. That's his best pitch. Brendan Ryan waiting on deck. Brendan, hero in last night's game. Big base hit. Give the Mariners the lead late. Payoff pitch up high. Ryan will get a chance to swing it. Two outs. Second walk issue by Parker. How about these matchups tomorrow? Franklin Morales and Felix Hernandez, then down at Tacoma. Jamie Moyer, Triple A affiliate of the Toronto Blue Jays, 49 years young. Going against Danny Hulton, making his Rainier's home debut. And we'll have obviously be here at Safe Go Field, but we'll give you highlights from Cheney Stadium. And he knocked around at his first Triple A assignment. Looking for him. Huge bounce back. Here's Ryan. What a finish last night for Brendan on a full count, one out. He singled over the head of second baseman Jamal Weeks. And that proved to be the game winner in the eighth inning. Wilhelmson came on to pitch a one, two, three, ninth. My understanding is Bill Kruger is going to be down at the game in Tacoma tomorrow night, so it'll be interesting to hear what he thinks of the two pitchers, see where Jamie's at, and what his assessment of Danny Holtson is. 
for the Bills reports from the stadium tomorrow. Really good at bat from Brendan Ryan last night. Got himself into a 3 2 count. Gets a slider. It just caused some problems for him. Ended up hitting it hard back up the middle. I thought it was great that he was able to come up with that hit. And again, he's been swinging much better over the last 10 games for Brendan Ryan, hitting 323. So he's heading in the right direction, which is a good sign because his defense has been outstanding all year, which what a lot of people would expect from him, but not always easy when you're struggling at the plate. So many guys will take that into the field. We haven't seen that from Brendan at all. Oh, not at all. Not even close. Three and one. Each row is on deck. Ackley at first. Not a big lead. Seven out of eight. Seven out of eight base deal. 3 1. And Ryan's aboard. Back to back walks from part to third of the game. And Hunter's trying to get something done here with two outs. Runners at first and second run in. Hottest student on record. He's going to wrap up. Can't miss series against the Boston Red Sox. They come in tomorrow, 7 10 start time. Goes through the weekend. You're going to see David Ortiz in the American League East Post Sox. Going against, going up against the Mariners. So tickets all four games. Great weekend of baseball. Go get them right now. Mariners.com. Red Sox started today, having moved up to fourth place in the American League. He's six and a half behind the Yankees. Yankees just won five four. Red Sox lead ten four in the ninth. Top of the ninth in Boston against Toronto. Here's each row. One. Things when you look at Parker, it's, it's amazing sometimes, but it gives you an idea how good his stuff is. He has 270 RA coming into the game in 66 innings that he has pitched this year, 32 walks. Already three walks here in the game. So he's been able to pitch his way out of some trouble. It's through, runners advance. He just spikes a fastball, pulls across his body, and spikes it into the dirt. Let's take a look at the McDonald's Supermo and this ball bouncing out in front of the feet of Ichiro. Didn't come up. And Kurt Suzuki, one of the best in the business. One of the things you don't expect as a major league pitcher is to have a major or a catcher is to have a major league pitcher spike a fastball. Tough to block that pitch. Five hole through the Empire, Dan Isanga. He was fortunate. 2 0. First strike. Hit can get two here. Two one pitch each row. Each row last night two for three. Single and a run scored. He got a single to center and a single to left. Second time through the order for the Mariners. Two and two, two outs and two on. Jared Parker has got a two and two record on the road, a 4 3 9 ERA. Mitro with his second look at. The young right hander. Two and two. Full count. Young right hander wanted that last pitch. I think he thought it hit the corner. It looked like it was just off the plate on the inside corner. There it is, the sixth pitch. He did. He just missed. Three and two to Ichiro. Off speed pitch. Got him. Fifth strikeout for Parker. He strands two. He does give up a home run to Jaso. Tie ball game at 1 1. Jaso didn't waste any time right here. Got all over it. And rode it into the right field stands. Tied up here at Safe Go Field.
When I originally saw the guys in the left, I thought they were from a ZZ Top cover band. With some interesting headgear. And the gentleman on the right, pretty her suit, huh? 1-1 one, one game. Brandon Hicks, the hitter. Second baseman. Jamal Weeks getting a day off. Hicks in just his fourth game. Fly ball center field. Gutierrez. Puts it away. One out. One down here in the third. Let's take a look at the Mariners calendar. Brought to you by Sleep Country USA. We're talking about the Red Sox coming to town. They'll be followed by another American League East team, the Baltimore Orioles. The Mariners have not fared well against the East thus far, winning two, losing ten. Beat the Yankees and beat, what, Toronto up there. The only two wins. Then go to the A's, and then it's the All-Star break. Season is flying by. Here's Kurt Suzuki. He's had a tough go with his left hand. He got hit 95 miles an hour by Daniel Bard, the hard-throwing right-hander from uh, Boston not too long ago. And then shortly thereafter, Jose Bautista with that long follow-through with the left hand hit him on the, on the left hand. So big reason why his power numbers are not much to speak of right now. No homers and 16 runs batted in. Kurt said, hey, part of the business. Talking to Ray Fossey, the former Major League catcher and broadcaster with the A's now about that. And he said that he's day one that he showed up. He wants to stay in the lineup. It doesn't matter to him. He wants to work with his pitchers and get him through. And he's one of the best, I think, probably one of the more underrated defensive catchers anyway in the American League. But his offensive number is certainly down. Hitting 213 has yet to have a home run this year in 216 at bats. Last homer here at Safeco Field late last September. Side two and two. You want to talk about some offense? How about this? Bottom six in Chicago. Mets 16, Cubbies one. Mets have gone for four home runs. Andy Murphy's at two, driven in five. Mets trying to hang in there. Four and a half back of the Nationals. Two two to Suzuki. Full count. On deck hitter Coco Crisp. So Millwood with his second full count. Parker's been in several. And Ryan takes the time, throws out Suzuki, two outs. Two outs here in the third, back to Coco Chris, top of the order. Make sure you join us July 4th. Mariners in the Orioles. He's saluting the men and women of the armed forces with a great deal to catch Mariners baseball on our nation's birthday. You're going to get $5 off U level seats or $10 off main level seats when you show a valid military ID here at Safeco Field. Get at the box office or any Mariners team store. So we like to see, I was wondering, I'd like to see some of the military folks out here. Mill would look like he was just throwing it up there. Yeah. Did you notice he wasn't really driving the last few pitches? That last pitch, it, it almost looked like a changeup, but it was, and you could see that he had a fastball grip, and he ends up throwing a pitch away, and now they'll come back again. Kevin had to deal with a groin issue, and I think that the bench probably saw the same thing, because I didn't see anybody wave the guys out, but Eric Wedge and Rick Griffin, the head trainer, both came out of the dugout immediately and took a trip out to the mound. The other thing, too, in the last couple of pitches, he looked like he was standing straight up. No drop and drive at all. And that's what you don't want to see your pitchers doing because that's when you end up with arm injuries. So we'll see what they decide on what's going on with Kevin. It's back that's up three pitches ago. Let's see what we get here. Yeah, right there. Oh, maybe it grabbed him again. And they're going to take him out of the yep. game. So Millwood. Injury being taken out of the ball game. A 1-1 contest here in the third with two outs. We'll be right back to Safeco Field.
Momo will get all the time he needs to warm up in this emergency setting with Millwood having to leave because of an injury. Uh, get as much time as he needs. Hopefully for Kevin, it's just a little bit of a strain, as you mentioned, Dave. He threw a couple of pitches after it looked like he hurt himself. So we'll find out more later in the ball game, and when we hear something, we'll let you know. But Iwakuma will take over. He's pitched well at times this year. Got off to a little bit of a rough start. Not really fair to him, though. He ended up sitting out in the bullpen for long periods of time. But once he was getting some consistent innings and coming out of the pen, he was pitching much better. So Iwakuma looked for his fastball to be about 91 miles an hour. We'll mix in a changeup, a curve slider. So Kevin Millwood has to leave the game after two and two thirds. About four pitches before he leaves the mound as we. Looks pretty normal with the drive. Oh, that looked like a changeup, but walks off a little bit. This is one where we think where it really bothered him. Yeah. And you can see on both of those pitches that he had the curveball the pitch before. There was no bite to it, no snap to it. And then he comes back with that last breaking ball, and yeah. Just trying to gut it out right now, and then after a while, the pain just got to be too, to be too much. So Iwakuma will warm up. And his first hitter is going to be Coco Crisp. We got a 1 1 game early on here at Safeco Field. In Seattle, Mariners and A's tied at one at top of the third. Tom Glasgow with you from the Ford Sports Desk. Before we resume play, let's take you to New York. Yankees facing the Indians. Yankees and Robinson Cano on a big time roll in this month of June. And for Cano, it continues launching that home run, his fifth in the last seven games. And the Bronx Bombers get it done by a final of five to four. All right, Tom, thank you. You're with Kuma, ready to go. And Chris, first pitch, rip down the line, foul. This catch down there. Well done. Came prepared. That was even blocked out, but a nice backhanded play with the glove using the leather. Better catch than Dwayne Wise didn't make last night that he got credit for in the How about Yankee. That? I told you it was crazy, wasn't it? It was. I bet I've seen it about 50 times now. How about the side view that they give you with the fans standing there holding the ball up? Wise comes out, he didn't say anything. The umpire Mike DeMuro didn't even ask, show me the ball. How do you do that? Come on. We got here this morning and I walked into the booth. That's the first thing. Kevin Kremen. Need replay. Need to have a replay. That is a foul ball. I said, yeah, the same thing to him. I said, if the umpire, DeMuro, had just asked to see the ball, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, and I, I get that it's hard to tell and you can't see it. And, and why he's falling into the stands and all the fans are up. And I get all of that. But when he comes out, all you have to do is have him show you the ball. Right? Dwayne Wise said he called out almost immediately. 
So it looks like he was running down towards him with his hand up in the air with the out call. He said, and so why is his quote was what? I was going to go back to left field. <laughs> his teammates were already in the dugout. Absolutely. <laughs> Eric Wedge made a good, Eric Wedge hadn't seen it. And as I was describing it to him, Carl Willis walked in, and we, the three of us were like, are you kidding? And Wedge made a good point. He said, too bad it wasn't the second out because then he would have had to throw the ball back in. Then you would have known, and then they would have had to do something about it. Wouldn't you think? Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, they just assumed he was running yeah. off the field, I guess, with the ball. Absolutely. Because I could tell, and here's the other thing, 2-2 two, two pitch fouled off. When you go back and look at that play, when Wise comes out of the stand, what did he do? He pops his, pounds his fist into the glove. After Clearly he took a couple yeah. of steps back, yeah. Oh, it was amazing. You got it, folks, if you haven't well, seen it. And the kicker to it all is Hanahan, who, the former Mariner, who yep. had hit the foul ball. Right. And had seen the replay, came out and said something because Hanahan was playing third. Demuro was on the third base line. Mm-hmm. And then he gets run. He gets thrown out of the game. Two and two. Line drive, center field, Gutierrez for the out. Iakuma comes in, gets the out here in the third inning. Mariners will have Goody Seeger and Montero coming up. It's a 1 1 game. We have a gorgeous day here in Seattle at Safeco Field. Glad you could join us. Franklin Gutierrez will lead it off. Kyle Seeger and Jesus Montero. Mariners with just one hit, but it was a big hit. John Jaso with the solo home run to tie the game up. But in to Gutierrez. Swing the bat really well since coming back. Five game hitting streak. Eight for eight for his last 19. One. So far, young Jared Parker, he struck out five, walked three. Mariners run on a home run by Jason. Falls in line with his numbers again. 66 innings pitch coming into the game. 32 walks, 49 strikeouts. This ball jams, Franklin. Hicks will throw over to Moss. And there's one down. AT&T trivia. Question for today, who holds the Mariners record for consecutive scoreless innings pitched? I'm riding with you, partner. What do you got? You got Randy Johnson, Mark Langston, Edwin Nunez, and Shigatosi Hasegawa. I know the answer. Well, you know it already, yeah, so I'll take a step. I'll go with, morning. I'll go see Edwin nu- Nunez. Edwin Nunez. Hard throwing right-hander. He showed up in the big leagues. He was 18, 19 years old when he showed up in mm-hmm. Seattle. Strike one to Kyle Seeger. Walked and stole a base in the first inning. Was stranded out there. 
A couple of home runs in this ball game. Coco Crisp on a 1-0 pitch to lead off the game. And then John Jaso, one out in the second, first pitch he saw, he homered. That's where we are. A run and a hit for both teams. Look out, Heads look up. out. Heads up. Paying attention. Yep. That's the at least the second one, if not the third this year for uh, Seager. Definitely the second. Well, when he turns it loose, they're impressive tosses too. This one's well over the dugout, back into the stands. I don't know, probably 12, 13 rows deep. Paying attention up there. Good news, it ended up in a seat. So some fan has himself a souvenir, but that's a pretty good throw right there. He can take a punch. He took a little bit of a shot. He's all right. Gotta get a Band-Aid on it. Don't want to ruin the white shirt. <laughs> they got the bat back. Hopefully they'll give him a substitute. A lot of ball, a lot of ballparks. They're not gonna get that return. Randy and Shiggy right now tied for the lead. Nunez making a move. <laughs> Here he comes. Gal's got a one two count. A good day to sit in the sun. That's really nice. One two. Gal's a strikeout victim. That's half a dozen already for Jared Parker, We're only in the third inning. Looks like another change up as you take a look at the McDonald Supermo. You can see the movement of this pitch running back on the plate. Kyle starts to attack it, thinking it's a fastball. Barrel out in front, and then comes the baseball. Good pitch, well located changeup. Well, that's what we heard from him. The scouting report on him was he had an excellent changeup, and we are seeing it today. Ontario struck out on a 3 2 pitch. Fooled on that one, strike one. Mariners 9 and 14 in the month of June. The A's are 14 and 10. Parker. The number of breaking balls to Montero his first time up. Punched him out on a breaking ball in that first pitch break ball in the dirt. Again, there's another one. Just got to do some two strike hitting here. Two outs, nobody on. One, two. Parker from the first base side of the rubber, the one-two pitch. Strike three called. Boy, he's dialed it in now. Seven strikeouts. We're through three here at Safe Go Field. Fourth inning coming up. It'll be Pennington, Reddick, and Cespedes under the sun here in Seattle. How about Jared Parker? 
He's got seven strikeouts through three innings. And this is getting Montero looking. And he lost track of the outs. In the zone. That's it. Like, all right. <laughs> That's just a small fine in kangaroo court. He'll be okay. That's pretty cool. Seven strikeouts, three walks. <laughs> Boys will be on it. So Hisashi Iwakuma came on to get the third out of the third inning. Kevin Millwood had to leave because of an injury. Yet to be announced. Here's Cliff Pennington, the shortstop switch hitter. And will lead it off here in the fourth. Seeger in on the grass in third. Pitch inside, ball one. It was a shame that Kevin had to leave in two and two thirds. He gave up the one hit, which was the solo homer. No walks, three strikeouts. The 39 pitches, 24 of them for strike. So he looked like he was back on his game. Fortunate that he had to leave. Had to leave the combined no hitter, what became a combined no hitter a few Fridays ago against the Dodgers. After six innings. Kuma behind 3 0. Pennington, Reddick, and Cespedes, 2 3 and 4 here for the Athletics. Coco Chris led off the game with a home run. John Jason in the second answered with a home run. 3 and 1. One pitch to Pennington. And he's aboard. First walk issued by Iwakuma brings up Josh Reddick. It's her home run and RBI leader. He's move out of here, go down to Texas. Dr. Mickey Morabito, longtime traveling secretary. I know Mickey. Got 35 years. He said he called his truck guy, the equipment guys down in Texas. How hot is it? 105, pal. 105. Welcome. Have some. I was talking to Ray Fossey about that. He said, Yep. Won't leave the hotel until I have to go to the ballpark, and then I won't leave the ballpark until I have to go back to the hotel. There's Ray. He's great. Outstanding. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> We're on the same program. Absolutely right. <laughs> Mariners only have one more trip to Texas. That'll be in September late. I get that middle trip was usually where we get the 105 and right. 108. Get it out of the way. Chance for two. Final take it himself. There's your double dip. Two out, two in the fourth. TNT trivia question. Let's review, shall we? Holds a Mariner record for consecutive scoreless innings pitch. Mike took himself out. He knew. I just took a stab at Nunez. The fans went with Randy Johnson over Shiggy. What you, what's, what's the answer, Mike? I, I think it's Shiggy. All right. Survey says the producer. He's he's gloating. Clean sweep. Got Langston. Good run, too. We're looking at 34 and a third. Mr. Hershiser, I believe, still holds a major league record. 59 and change, I believe. Two outs. Cespedes looks at a strike. Flat out to right his first time up. Liner. Get it. Had it covered. Good so Awa Kuma with the help of the double play face at the minimum in the fourth in this 1-1 game.
field under the sun. Folks having fun out in the pen. Hey, make sure you follow the Mariners with the MLB.com at Bat12 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, and Windows Mobile. I use it all the time. Get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text it back to 31826 or visit Mariners.com for details. Saunders shows punt leading off here in the bottom of the fourth. Saunders, Jaso, and Smoke against Jared Parker, who struck out seven and walked three. Giving up just one hit, the Jaso home run. Popped up. Short left field battling the sun. And coming over, Coco Chris bails out Seth Smith. Give him an attaboy and a thank you. <laughs> yes, he did. But Jaso, last time up, first pitch he saw, turned on him. Rides it out of here for his third home run, his 17th RBI. Mariners home run number 69. Ties the A's for ninth place in the American League. Actually keeps the one behind. Chris. Home run. Hicks knocks it down. Base hit for Jason. Second Mariner hit. Take a look at the backhanded play by Hicks. Again, Jamile Weeks getting the afternoon off. Off the heel of his glove. Ball just bounces back over towards second base. Jason two for two in the game. They need to get Justin Smoke going. Justin over one of the games struck out swinging his first time up. Out back this way. He had a five home run uh, stretch. Five, hit five home runs in a 10 game stretch. May 20 to June 2nd. Get back in that little group. That'd be really something special for the Mariners. I think the big thing with Justin is you talked about the home runs and that stretch. It's one of those things that I think for him, it, the, the home runs are going to come and go, and they're going to be streaky like a lot of home run hitters, guys that hit the ball out. But you just have to find a way to have a little more consistently. I'm picking up your base hits in between those times. That's where he's had his struggles. Tomahawks one center field. Crisp is there for the out. Two down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Two outs, runner on here in the fourth. Brings up Ackley. He walked 3 2 pitch in the second. Didn't have to be. I'm sure, that's what Dustin's thinking. Off speed pitch that was, well, it was up out of the strike zone, and it was according to the tracer. One, two. Just Dustin a little bit of something to think about here, right? Change fast, fastball. Two pitches up in the zone. It's been yep. a pitch that, that Dustin has had the tendency to chase. Another one up. Up the middle. Pennington just gets it. One, two. Jason with an infield hit. Nothing across for the Mariners in the fourth 1 1 ball game.
fifth inning. And right now, let's check what Mariner topics are on Twitter right now. What's being discussed? What do we got? The trends are Millwood and Jiso. You can follow and at Mariners. Just joining us, Kevin Millwood had to leave with right now an undisclosed injury after two and two thirds. 39 pitches, 24 for strikes. John Jaso, he's got the Mariners' only run. A home run in the second inning. Here's Seth Smith to lead it off. Smith, Brandon Inge, and Brandon Moss. Speed pitch misses outside. I'm told that the Giants played the A's. They had five Brandons in a game at one point. Three Inge, Moss, and Hicks for the A's, and then Brandon Crawford, Brandon Belt, from San Francisco. One Smith today took a call third strike. Two and one. Always wondered if it was an advantage or a disadvantage. When you're just hanging out in the bullpen. All of a sudden, the pitcher gets injured, and they tell you, you get up, go out in the middle of the field, get loose out there in front of everybody. Everybody, right. And then and then go ahead and start getting some hitters out for us, and we have no idea how long you're going to be out there. At least when you get that phone call and you're kind of watching the game later, you have an expectation, and you, and you get time to prepare. You're going to get that guy. You know? Right. right. You're going to get that right. Here's you're going to get that report. Right there. Here you go. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Three one. Opening of the old TV show Mission Impossible. It's not like you're turning it down either. Right. <laughs> Here's your mission, pal. Go do it. <laughs> I know from talking to some relievers, they, 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 you know, going out onto the field and having to get loose and when they're just starting to throw for the first time. Some of them absolutely hate it. Some you know. of them, they, they, they don't really care. But I would say most of them would rather not do it. I guess the advantage would be that you get a chance to throw a bunch of pitches off of the mound that you're pitching from, sure. as opposed to coming in from the bullpen as he will. Kuma will walk Smith. I could see how they would hate it. I've heard that too. I don't think I would like it. Ooh. Totally exposed. Yeah, you're trying to. You may have done some throwing, whatever your routine is for that day. Mentally, you're not ready because you're not anticipating this. So that's right. got to be something all of a sudden you got to. Where's that adrenaline? And, and, ah. and, and Kevin is pitching great, so yeah. you assume, okay. He's dealing. He's, he's going to be good for six, seven, eight innings, whatever it's going to be. And, you know, have a few sunflower seeds, <laughs> check out the view. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> yeah, go. It's the mental part, probably. The right. mental part's got to be tougher than the physical part. I, I would think so. Century Link high speed pitch. 94 for Parker, 91 for Iwakuma. The walk the second issued by. Iwakuma since his entry to the contest. Brandon Inns the hitter. Nine pitches for Brandon in his last at bat. All those pitches up in the zone. Eventually grounded out to third. 0 2 from Iwakuma. Right field down the line and foul. Dan the Sun got a souvenir ball right to you. I bet. This pal. Smith, not much of a lead at first. 0 2 pitch to end. Strike three call. He would come up his first strikeout. Inge discussing with Isaiah. Take a look at this last pitch. 
See the grip? Four seam grip from Iwakuma with the arm angle to give it a little bit of run back onto the outside corner as that pitch started off the plate. Great shot from our McDonald Supermo. You can see from the tracer, awfully close pitch, maybe a little bit off the plate. Brings up first baseman Brandon Moss, took a cold third strike ending the second inning. One out, one on here in the fifth. Three games of a long 10 game homestand. The Mariners thrilled to be back here in Seattle. This is home game number 34. Make that 35. Game number 77. I was right the first time. It is 34 and 77. Mariners at home, a record 13 and 20. One, two. Three Wakuma. He needs to stay out of that area. That was a fastball up in the zone. Talking about it with Moss being called up. Seven home runs here in the month of June. That's a pitch that'll get him in trouble. Able to get away with it that time. One out, one on, oh, two pitch coming. Oh, and two here. Brandon Moss. Swing and a miss. He's gone. Strikeout number two for Iwakuma. Two outs here in the fifth. Off speed pitch. Off the plate away. That's good looking breaking ball. You can see the ball, the rotation of it. Second baseman Brandon Hicks, the hitter. Two out, one on. Brandon Hicks, another A, recently called up. 273, couple of RBIs for him. Pitch. I don't know if you've checked, but I'm sure you're going to be delighted to know that the Boston series. Yes. Number 18, base game Matsuzaka is not starting. That means you can get Four out. Four games of and we missed him. <laughs> oh, darn. Get that robe of consolation <laughs> on you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> 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 One and one. Big swing and a miss. Morales and Hernandez. You get Cook and Wesley, Beckett and Ramirez, Dubron and Vargas. But the uh, Red Sox, they've moved up out of last place, fourth place in the American League East. One two pitch. We kid about Matsuzaka because he and Joaquin Benoit are two of the great game stoppers in the American League. Benoit, reliever for Detroit. Matsuzaka, starter for the Red Sox. Games come to deliberate as being kind. A grinding halt.
foul. Iwakuma in for Millwood. Kevin two and two thirds. I hit a run. No walks, three Ks. Left with an injury. Iwakuma got the third out of the third inning. Beneficiary of a double play in the fourth. He struck out two here in the fifth, and he's got a one two count to Hicks. Jaso set up outside. Swing and a miss. Strikes out the last three many faces here in the fifth inning after issuing a walk to Smith. One one ball game. As we get ready for the bottom of the fifth, Tom Glasgow with you from the Ford Sports Desk. Let's go to Boston. Red Sox will be here tomorrow, but first things first at Fenway today, taking on the Blue Jays. We'll pick it up bottom of the first. Adrian Gonzalez at the dish. Chopper down the first baseline. Edwin Encarnacion cannot handle it, and that opens the floodgates. Red Sox rack up six runs in the first. They belt the Jays. Final score, 10 to 4. Let's rejoin Dave and Mike. All right, Tom, thank you. Brendan Ryan's going to lead it off. Ryan, Ichiro, and Gutierrez. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning against Jared Parker, who struck out seven, walked three. Ryan takes a pitch up high, shows bunt. Brendan walked in his first at bat on a 3-1 pitch. There's a strike. Good day for some lemonade here. 61 degrees. Light breeze. Mostly sunny skies. Popped up near the Mariner dugout. First baseman's got a play and he makes it. It's Brandon Moss. One out. Now the owner Nitro, third time up for him. Fly to right. And struck out. Folks enjoy a beautiful day here at Safe Go Field. We'll have another day game next week against uh, Baltimore. And it third is Inge. The ball bounces in there. Ichirel 0 for 2. Glide out to right. Punched out back in the second inning. A couple of runners on second, third situation. Ended up chasing a change up off the plate. There being tilted Kevin Millwood reoccurrence of that right groin injury that took him out of the game a, few, a couple of weeks ago against the Dodgers. Not good. No, hopefully it's not. 
worse than it was before. 3 0. Back with a strike. Get it done, base hit. Intro. Third Mariner hit today. One out here in the fifth. Gets a count in his favor, and here's a fastball. It's up out over the plate. McDonald Supermo seeing the concentration on Ichiro's base. Solid base hit into left field. See the guys run some bases, Dave. I'm with you. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Going to make something happen. Kyle Seeger had a stolen base back in the first inning. He was walking and then stole second. Alpaya to Gutierrez who struck out looking and grounded out the second. One down here in the fifth. Each row at first. He's 10 out of 12 in base stealing. A's lead the American League. And stolen bases. The Mariners are eighth. 49 now 50 with the one by Seeger. Sometimes the base runners, if they can get their lead a little bit early and get a peek into the catcher, they may be able to steal a sign. And with the amount of changeups that Parker has thrown, if Ichiro can pick that up and run on a pitch when he's going to throw the changeup, increases chances of making it down in the second. Seager stolen on a changeup. There's a strike, one one. Regarded Jared Parker. He has some credentials in the minor leagues, doesn't he? Sure does. Pretty good ride. Deep right center field. That ball is run down by Coco Crisp. Stayed with it all the way. Put it right center field. Two outs. Put it in front of Josh Reddick. Our Banner Bank building to the future. What a performance a couple of nights ago by Rosmo Ramirez. He hit every milestone they'd set out for him in that game coming off poor performance in Arizona. Really pissed well. You can see the 10 strikeouts, career high for him. Only three hits over the eight innings. Terrific changeup. Really nice job by Rosmo. We will see him on Saturday. This one fouled off Saturday against Josh Beckett. Secret today, a walk and a stolen base. And he struck out in the third. Kyle looking for his first hit of the series. I vote for that hit to be in the right center field gap right about now. I let 51 run. Yeah. Two. Anchor has really anchored himself at first. Well, two outs and two strikes on Kyle. Take a shot at it. If you make it, great. If you don't, Kyle lead off next inning. O two pitch. Runner holds. Strike three called. Eight strikeouts for Parker. To look at I 90. Beautiful day here in Seattle. The Boston Red Sox will be coming from the other end of I 90, but they'll be here tomorrow.
One one game here tomorrow. It's going to mark Seattle's first rechargeable battery recycling day. Presented by Call to Recycle. Drop off. You're no longer use rechargeable batteries at Seattle Center's International Fountain. And while you're there, you're going to meet Mariners outfielder Michael Saunders. He's going to be signing autographs 1230 to 130. For more information, visit call to recycle.org. 1-1 one, one game. Home run by Chris to lead it off. Jaso responded with a one-out home run in the second. Kurt Suzuki, the catcher, leads off here in the sixth. Followed by Coco Crisp and Cliff Pennington. Iwakuma struck out the last three men that he's faced. Breaking ball. And Iwakuma throws him out. So far, he's doing exactly what Eric Wedge would like to see him do as he comes out of the bullpen. And that is throw strikes. 37 pitches, 25 of those for strikes. Keep the ball on the ground if you can. Coco Crisp, a home run and a fly out the center. It was the first batter faced by Iwakuma when Iwakuma came on from Millwood. Recurrent to that right groin injury for Kevin, took him out of the ballgame. After two and two thirds. Speedy crisp showing Bunt Seeger came charging in. Chris batting average of just 215, but if he gets on base. Cause some problems. He's 15 out of 60. Ground ball. Ackley surrounds it. There's him out. Two down. But Sound Transit's new easy to use trip planner. It's easy to get to the game or where you need to go. Visit soundtransit.org to play your next trip. Quick two outs in the sixth. With Pennington, the shortstop, fly to left and walked. Action out in the pen. That is one of the great attractions here in Seattle. No matter what the weather, no matter how the ball club is playing, they always have a good crowd out in the pen. Strike one to Pennington. And one of the things we've seen in this series, Oakland A's coming into the series, second in the league in the ERA. So they have some pitching and the Mariners offensively have certainly noticed that. That always seems to be the case with the A's though, right? Oh yeah. In terms of hitting, the Mariners 12th in the American League, 238 entering today. A's are last at 224. Dismissed. Forty one pitches for Iwakuma. A couple of walks, three strikeouts. Here's the one two. My ball left field, long run, Sunders. No problem, no puts it away. Nice efficient inning by Iwakuma in the sixth. Maybe some runs coming up. You got Montero, Sunders, and Jaso.
here in Seattle. Montero, Saunders, and Jaso for the Mariners here in the home sixth. Montero today has struck out swinging and looking. Eight Ks on the day for Jared Park against three walks. I think the one thing with him is he's not only had a good changeup today, but he's mixed his pitches up well. He's also thrown a few more breaking balls than I expected him to. There's a breaking ball that Montero hits out in the left field. Seth Smith lets Chris get it. Like Seth had a hard time picking that baby up. Well, if he is, he did the right thing. Let Coco Chris handle it whenever he can. Certainly would like to see that. Typically, the outfielders will have a conversation. I'm sure Goodyears and Saunders have too on the different angles of the sun. So they're aware of where they're going to have some trouble. You're good to us. I'm good to a certain point from here. You got to help. Yeah, exactly right. Speaking of Michael Saunders, I'll get a chance again to Michael 0 for 2. He's had a strikeout swinging in the second inning and then flew out to center field back in the fourth. Been a tough few days here. He's won for his last nine. Get that ground ball Hicks throws him out. Another good changeup. One of the better changeups we've seen. Root Sports looking for the biggest Mariner fans in the Northwest. We're going state to state. Find the most passionate in our region this month. We want to hear from devoted fans in Oregon. So log on to RootSports.com. Show us why you're the Mariners' ultimate Northwest fan. Quick two outs here in six. And Jaso having a day. Home run and an infield hit. Yeah, he's been the Mariners offense. Boy, two of the three hits. Two outs, maybe he can get into another one. Solo home run, the third home run of the year for Jaso. Four quick pitch walk. Fourth walk issued by Parker. Take no two out brings up smoke. It's been a tough day with a strikeout and a fly to center. We've seen Justin make some. Adjustments to the changeup. He's hit some home runs this year on the changeup. Maybe he can get one that's up in the zone and give it a ride. Strike one. Next pitch will be 90 for Parker. Season high is 112, so he's in good shape with his pitch count. Up around the light ring upstairs, right field side. Kevin Bodie doing a great job with that shot. Get a look at the cityscape as well. Meanwhile, smoking an 0-2 hole. A good look out towards Elliott Bay, looking at skyscrapers in the downtown area. And it's quite high. Baseman takes to Moss, and that'll do it. Mariners leave a runner. That's it through six. A 1 1 game here at Safeco Field.
Jack in the Box, you can try the new Chipotle Chicken Club Combo for just $4.99 plus tax and buy Northern Quest Casino, Spokane's newest destination resort. Send it back upstairs to Dave and Mike. Great view from atop the stadium here at Fitco Field. Hey, you're doing a heck of a job up there, Kev. Good work. Where are the, the safety belts and the ropes and all that stuff? <laughs> Atta boy. Good stuff. There's Josh Reddick. He'll lead it off for the A's in the seventh. 1 1 game. Home run by Chris. The lead it off. Jay So answered in the second. Well, when you're in a 1 1 game, all the innings are important. But this one, maybe the most difficult for Iwakuma, having to work through the middle of the order with Reddick, Cespedes, and Smith. of Iwakuma and Millwood. Held the A's to one run on one hit. Forty five pitches for Iwakuma, thirty of them strikes. Good ratio there. Bouncing ball to Ackley. One out. Beautiful ballpark, isn't it? Great shot. One out here in the seventh. Dangerous hitter coming to the plate. You want Cespedes, the DH. Let's fly to right, fly to center. He will swing hard. Pulled on that pitch. Homered yesterday in the seventh inning. When I keep the seagulls away, put up a fake eagle. If you ever seen Eagles hunt, you can understand why the Seagull said, never mind. He does swing hard, doesn't he? Hits it to a deep part of the ballpark and gone. He has some pop, too. I thought that was going to be a line drive into the gap. Tremendous carry on it. Second home run of the series for Cespedes. Got an off-speed pitch down and in the middle of the plate and lined it out of here. I mean, that thing's crunched. Yeah, it ended up out in the pen in a hurry. And that's four and change easily. Take a look at the swing. Strong man as you take a look at our McDonald Supermo. This is an off-speed pitch, 82 miles an hour. Squares it up. Another look at this swing. I mean, that's the sound. Wow. It is some kind of strong. We've seen it today, yesterday. We saw it earlier in the season. He's got some serious pop. Now you know why Billy Bean got him out of Cuba. 2 1 A's.
Yankees have a 2-1 lead here against the Mariners at Safeco Field. And fans, be sure to check out the all-new Root Sports Game Connect. An interactive second screen experience bringing fans closer to the game with live stats, trends, and analysis. Root Sports Game Connect. Connect now at rootsports.com. Third pitcher this afternoon for the Mariners as they trail. 2-1, seventh inning with one out. Lucas Litke takes over. Lucas and his numbers. Fastball will be around 90 miles an hour. Good slider. Here we are working our way into July. And yes, Lucas Litke gave up his first run on this last road trip in Arizona. First run of the season. Boy, he's been good. And Charlie Furbush. A very good lefty tandem late in the ball game for the Mariners. Here's Seth Smith. Speed pitch for strike one. Smith today strikeout looking at a walk. Two home runs today by the A's. Ground ball to Ackley. Bobble stays with him. Throws him out. Two outs. Two outs to run in here in the seventh. Brings up Brandon in to third baseman. Who's grounded out the third. Took it. Called third strike. Two now. And strike one. Brandon League, the right-hander. Getting ready in the Mariners' pen. Brandon Moss waiting on deck, left-handed hitter. So I think League getting ready for Hicks and Suzuki. Off the plate. One one. 49 pitches, 33 for strikes for Iwakuma. He goes three and two thirds. Did he hit a run? Yes, he did. Inge could not hold up. One and two. Oakland Athletics with two hits on the day, both of them solo home runs. Mariners three hits, and just the one run. That a solo home run from John Jason. That play. So Coco Crisp. He started the ball game with 1-0 pitch. No doubt about it. Home run into the lower right field stands. What a good center field today with a lot of sun here, and it's been troublesome for Seth Smith in left field as it is for. Anybody in certain balls hit the left field. Two and two. Seems like Inge has seen his share of pitches this afternoon. This will be the seventh pitch of the at bat coming up to Brandon. First time up, let's see, five, seven, eight pitches. Fifth inning, four pitches. Three, right, three called. Second time he's looking to call third strike. Mariners trail by a run. Checking out, looking at downtown from Safeco Field with the Mariners trail 2-1.
But the roof pulled back on this two to one athletics contest yesterday. Took you for a ride as the roof was extended, covering us up here. It's some inclement weather. And then they got the word open it up. And look at this. It's not a sight you see on a regular basis. Good job, Byer. Our crew with the time lapse photography. Good stuff. Three home runs in the game. Two by the Athletics. Coco Crisp and Ioannis Cespedes. One home run for Jaso. It's Mariners only run. One one here to Ackley. Parker has been on his game today. 94 pitches, 59 of those for strikes. What about the changeup? He's had a great changeup today. He's mixed his breaking ball in with that and a good fastball at times 94 miles an hour. Looks like that crossed up Suzuki. Two and two. Ackley, Ryan, and Ichiro. Some action down in the pen. And that's Sean Doolittle. Full count here to Ackley. Payoff pitch. Popped up. Short right field. Reddick. First out. Let's ask the booth. Chris wants to know it's a record for the most players with the same first name in a lineup. Interesting you would ask that because we got Brandon Inge, Brandon Moss, Brandon Hicks. They started for Oakland. We got Brandon Lee out in the bullpen. Now, since 1921, database only goes back so far, but we might have an answer for you. And we have to go back to 1963 as Ryan Fowles went off. August 23rd to be exact. Don Blasingame, Don Locke, Don Zimmer, Don Leppard, and Don Rudolph all played in the game. All for the Washington Senators. And they all played together twice. Soft line drive handled by Hicks. Two outs. Next pitch for Parker will be 100 again, a season high in 112. I think we'd like to see him out of the game. Been able to do much off of him. He's given up just the one solo homer to Jaso. Three hits on the game. Ichiro, one of those hits, one for three. Had a good series, four for ten. Strike one. Three hits today. The Jaso home run. Second inning. Fourth inning infield hit by Jaso. Each row's base hit in the fifth. One on one, sixty three strikes. All two strikes, Each row. See what he's done in the game four walks, eight strikeouts. Two pitch side. Hey Dave, the Mets finally stopped scoring. Seventeen. Good grief. He becomes seventeen to one. And each row. swings and misses. This kid can pitch. Derek Park. He's got a two-one lead as we go to the eighth.
Shot by Pat Brown. Great work here. In certain areas of Puget Sound, there's only four days a year where you can go shrimping. That's a good haul right here. Good, good stuff. Pat Brown with the work. Very nice. Only four days out of the year, huh? For certain areas of Puget wow. Sound. Brandon Moss leads it off against Lucas Litke, top of the eighth. There's the full haul here. <laughs> Shrimp, it's what's for dinner. Like they were good size, too. <laughs> they were. Litke, the third pitcher for the Mariners today. Millwood, if you're just joining us, went two and two thirds. Had a reoccurrence of that strain rate right groin injury from couple of weeks ago. Iwakuma went three and two thirds. Hit a run. It was earned. Two walks and three K's. And Litke now facing his third hitter. Brandon League ready out in the pen. Started throwing last inning. A couple of right handers coming up after Moss. You also have Grant Balfour getting loose in the A's bullpen. Rolls over on a pitch. Smoke records the out. Moss is gone. One out. That'll bring out Eric Wedge. There's Grant. The pitching change coming up. One out in the eighth. They'll bring on the right-hander, Brandon League. 2-1 Athletics. Here. Remember earlier we were talking about an occurrence at Yankee Stadium. Watch this. Jack Hanahan, a former Mariner, who pops one up. Dwayne Wise. Remember him from the Burley Perfect game into the stands. Makes an attempt. Look at the guy in the red shirt. The guy in the red shirt right there. He's holding up the ball. The umpire says that Hanahan's out. There's the ball right there. And then the big mistake is he doesn't ask Wise to show him the baseball. And he, Wise puts his hand in the glove. There you go. He doesn't have it. Sees his teammates because DeMuro had called it a catch. His teammates are in the dugout. That would have been the third out of the inning. And, again, you know, a lot of people talking about replay and all that. But all he had to do was just ask to show the ball, which you would right. see most of the time. And, Nick, you pointed out, Wise is coming back. He punches the glove. Clearly there's no ball. <laughs> I mean, it's just unbelievable. Watch Wise right here. That's a great effort. I oh, mean, it's just spilling into the stands. Great effort. We've seen him. He's made a lot of highlight catches. In Thankfully, his he does not get hurt. He caught a break there. But as you pointed out, there was a guy. There's a fly ball right side. That'll get out of play. One of the fans there in a blue shirt, he turns around. There's one angle where the fan turns around. He sees the guy in the red shirt with the ball. His eyes go, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Put the ball down. Don't let him yeah. see it. Yeah. Crazy. I would imagine. I would imagine Mr. Turi called Mr. Demuro this morning. I would think so. It, it's it's a fairly basic thing to do to ask the player to show you the ball just to make sure. Sure. 
you know, if something happens as he's down. And you'll take a little other look at it as Wise goes in. You'll see it deflect off of his heel of his glove. And it rolls down to the man in the red shirt. We'll pick the ball up. Watch the guy in blue. Trying Watch. to help. There's the ball. This one to right field. Backs up Petro a little bit. Watch the guy's eyes, the blue shirt guy. He's going to turn around. He sees the out call. Then he turns around and sees the ball, and he's like, hey, put that away. <laughs> Is that great? What are you doing? <laughs> Oh, brother. <laughs> Two outs. Great effort. Here's Kurt Suzuki. And like Eric Wedge said, he said, you know, being that it was the third out, if it had been the second out, you know, at the ball would have had to get back and play, and that umpire would have been in even more trouble. My goodness, he would have had no ball to show. Punched into center field. Gutierrez for the out. Not getting any earlier. Bottom of the eighth coming up. 2-1 Athletics. Seattle Mariners baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Snoqualmie Casino, Seattle's premier entertainment, gaming, and dining destination. By Sterling Bank, life is about the good stuff. Your bank should be, too. Visit our new website at bankwithsterling.com. And by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Let's rejoin Dave and Mike. Maybe some late-inning lightning here, Tom. Let's hope. For the Mariners who trail two to one. This kid threw a terrific game today. Really good. Nine strikeouts, 104 pitches for him. Gave up the one run. It was the solo home run to John Jaso. Four walks. But we heard a lot about him. And we saw a lot of it. Career high in strikeouts with nine. But the changeup we heard about that good fastball at 94 miles an hour. And again, what an adjustment the young man had made from a power pitcher. Throwing in the mid to upper 90s, hurting his arm, and then coming back with a changeup. In short order, just been a couple of years, so he's really pitched well today. Nice recovery from his shoulder and Tommy John surgery. Grant Ballpark takes over. Good fastball. Grant's fastball will be in the low to mid 90s at times. You can see the 30 strikeouts over 37 innings that he has pitched. Opponents average 181. Also makes in a slider with that fastball. Was Plus the closer. Yep. Lost his job. Ryan Cook. In that role now. Mariners get a chance as any. Franklin Gutierrez, Kyle Seeger, and then Montero after that. So have their best coming up to the plate this inning. Last Mariner hit each row. One out in the fifth. One of three in the afternoon. Jaso home run. The Jaso infield hit. 
and then a base hit by Ichiro. And two hits for the Athletics. Home runs by Chris and Cespedes. One to Goody. Outside. Second day we've had an Australian pitcher on the mound. Yesterday, Travis Blackley started. For the Athletics and went seven innings. Green one. Sydney, Australia. A home for Mr. Balfour. Franklin in a good count. Yesterday he missed a home run. About a foot hitting it off the left center field fence. We should get a fastball to hit here. He does. Pops it up. Coming on crisp. Takes charge. Makes the play. Mariners aces king, so make sure you grab a seat in the King's Court for Felix Hernandez next home start for tomorrow evening, 7-10 start time. Take on David Ortiz and the Boston Red Sox. Get a seat in the court, a coveted King's Court t-shirt and a cake card for only $35 for tickets to see Felix and the Red Sox. Go to Mariners.com slash Felix. Kyle Seeger walking a stolen base in the first strikeout swinging in the third strikeout looking in the fifth. Hard smash fair ball. Fan interfered with it. Ground rule double. Seekers 20th double of the season. Take a look at this. It's a pitch inside, turns on it. Moss looked like he was trying to guard the line, but Kyle hooking it right over the bag just fair. Yeah, he's close to it. Just late start. Almost took a step backwards before he dove. So Montero will get a chance to drive in a run. The Mariners 0 for 2 with men in scoring position. Again, the one run coming off of a home run. From John Jaso. Here's Montero. 0 for 3. Tying run at second. One out. Montero has seen a lot of breaking balls. That was a first pitch fastball. Montero 0 for 1 against Balfour. Brandon ends the third baseman is not guarding the line at third. And great game from Parker, Jared Parker, but the Mariners now have a chance to score a run off of Balfour. One. Chris rallied yesterday. And a two nothing lead through six. A's tied it in the seventh. Mariners in the eighth inning on a Brendan Ryan base hit to right field. Got the lead and come, came away with a victory is another slider. Fools Montero one and two. Two for three day for Jesus. One and two with Seeger at second. Live ball center field. Chris is there. Seeger tags. And he's into third base with two outs. Bring up Michael Saunders. Saunders 0 for 3 in the game. Strikeout swing, fly ball to center field, and then grounded out to second.
go from Michael one for his last 10. Saunders 0 for 1 against Grant Balfour. Missed inside, ball one. Dies to the ninth inning we go. A's lead it to one. As we get to the ninth inning, It'll be the top of the order. Coco Chris, Cliff Pennington, Josh Reddick. Pennington led off the check that Chris led off the game. 1 0 pitch, he homered off of Kevin Millwood. They got the A's going. Mariners tied it. Jaso with a home run in the second. Cespedes, a screaming line drive into the pin. Left center field that was in the seventh inning. That's the difference right now. Brandon Lee gives up a fly ball. Good kid is fighting the sun. He's having trouble. And he makes a catch. Wow, good job to hang in there. That was tough. He had the glasses on. Here's Tom Glasgow. Hey, thanks a lot from the Forward Sports Desk. A little preview of two ball games tomorrow. And I tell you what, if cloning were possible, tomorrow it would come in handy. First of all, here at Safeco Field, Red Sox in for the first of four. The matchup on the mound, Felix Hernandez, Franklin Morales, and then at Cheney Stadium tomorrow, former Mariners great Jamie Moyer, age 49, going against Danny Holson, making his home debut for the Rainiers. We'll have live reports on that ball game from Bill Kruger at Cheney Stadium tomorrow during our broadcast. And guys, I don't know about you, little advice for Danny Holson after that game, find Jamie Moyer and talk pitching for a while. <laughs> Not a bad idea. A great idea. One a young idea. lefty talking to the old crafty left-hander. One one to Pennington. One out, nobody on. Lead the fourth Mariner pitcher today. Ryan Cook, the closer for the A's, getting loose, ready to pitch in the ninth inning. Mariners have left-hander Oliver Perez warming up in their pen. Popped up. Ryan has got a beat on. Fighting Sun. Nicely done. That's a fair ball. Two down. These teams today have combined for three runs on six hits. And it's 
seven strikeouts and A's hitters. Nine of Mariner hitters. There's Reddick. Reddick today, strikeout, and it's a double play, grounded out the second. There's Perez, Oliver Perez. Join the club on the road. One. -one. Well struck. He threw right in his tracks. Work to do. Nice work by Brendan Lee. As he retires all five men that he faces. Coming up, Jaso. Followed by Smoke. And by Dustin Ackley. Mariners down two to one. Today's Tracer Technology is brought to you by the Emerald Queen Casino, the entertainment capital of the Northwest. Got the rally hats working here in the sun at Safe Gold Field. Ninth inning coming up, bottom of the ninth with Jason Smoke and Ackley. And they're going to have to get it done against Ryan Cook. And <laughs> why not? Rally birthday cones, why not? Nissan shift to the bullpen. And A's with their third pitcher today. Ryan Cook has taken over as the closer for the A's. Hard throwing right hander. ERA at a 165 opponent's average. Only 106 has not given up a home run this year. We saw him the other night. Throws hard. Get it wild though. 21 walks and 32 and two thirds innings for Cook. Hard slider. Go along with a really good fastball. With four hits, John Jaso's got two of them. Outside to John. We get the home run from John Jaso. Was the first pitch fastball off of Parker. Parker was terrific, but this is one of the mistakes he makes. And Jaso picking up with a couple of hits off of Parker, including that home run. One on one to John. Just want to give your thoughts on the upcoming Red Sox series. Fire away. Fastball one and two. Seven three three seven three three. Text in your thoughts. One and two from Ryan Cook. Cook born 
Gordon still lives in Clovis, California. Came over from Arizona in December with Jared Parker. And he is throwing hard today. That last fastball at 97 miles an hour. He's able to get it in on the hands of John Jason. Cook saved Monday's one nothing ease win. Walked one, struck out two. Two two pitch hit off the end of the bat. Inge goes across to Moss. One out. Bring up Justin Smoke. Justin in the game today, over three as a strikeout swing. Fly ball to center field and rounded out the second. He's second only to the Angels in ERA in the American League entering today's action. Last in offense. They lead with one out here in the ninth. Inge has to go through the five hole. And smokes the board. That looked like it hit off the edge of the grass and just went flat. Brandon expecting that ball to bounce up to him. Didn't quite get the gate down in time and goes right through the legs of Brandon Inge. Normally a quality fielding third baseman. You take a look at it, see if it hits the edge of the grass, stays down. Pulled the glove up a little bit early, so the Mariners catch a break there. Very good. Kawasaki is going to pinch run for smoke. One out, and the hitter's Dustin Ackley. Tying runs aboard. One out. Ackley this afternoon will walk, ground a shortstop and a fly to right field. Brendan Ryan, the hero last night, waiting on deck. Brendan with the base hit to give the Mariners the lead. In the eighth inning on the bench for Wedge with Kawasaki running now for Smokey as Figgins, Olivo, and Wells. One out, Ackley. Two tuna. Suzuki going out for quick chat. Nobody else throwing in the A's bullpen. So Bob Melvin going to leave it up to Cook. Tom Wilhelmson starting to get loose for the Mariners. There's Tom. Cook is ready. He's got a 3 0 coming here to Ackland. There's a strike. Right one out of here. Let's go home. Okay, I'm in. Three one pitch. Left field. Smith towards the line with room. Two down. Now you look at the swing by Dustin Ackley in our McDonald's Super Mo. It's a fastball, middle of the plate. Dustin is a little bit tardy and pops it up to left field. I'll leave it up to Brendan Ryan. To try to keep this thing moving along for the Mariners. Brendan, over two, he's walked, popped up to first and the second. First pitch to Ryan. Ooh, did it hit him? It did. Running runs aboard. That'll work. 
tying run in scoring position. Hits him with a first pitch fastball. Brendan. Gets him on the elbow. A little bit of everything. Yep. Elbow, shirt, ribs. Yep. Gets it all. Give each row an opportunity. Each row one for four in the game. Mariners are 0 for 4 with men in scoring position this afternoon, so they need a big hit. Each row has been the hot hitter for him. Had a really good road trip, hit 500 for the trip, and it's continued here on the homestand, 4 for 11 in this series. And we see him hit many a baseball out of the yard during BP. You could use one of those right now. Today, fly to right, strikeout, base hit to left, and a strikeout. Seth Smith playing towards the line in left field. Coco Crisp is playing up and towards the line. Reddick playing straight away and right. Base hit to center. They should be able to score. Crisp but does not have a good throwing arm. 0 and 1 to each row. 1 2. It was just a good fastball at 96 miles an hour. Right at the top of the strike zone, each row swing underneath. It can't quite get to the good heater up there. Cook does have a good one. 0-2, oh, two. two outs, two on. Balls it off. Could use a big hit with two outs here. Down a run, two one, two outs. Ryan at first represents the winning run. Pitched each row, struck him out. It's the ball game. A's take two out of three. Final here, two to one. Just not enough offense. Great pitching by the Athletics today, particularly Jared Parker, their starter, as Cook finishes off each row. Another high fastball. This one at 96 miles an hour, top of the strike zone. They stayed up there. Good fastball, top of the strike zone, the entire bat to Ichiro, not able to catch up to it. So the Mariners 0 for 5 with men in scoring position as Coco Crisp. He's the one that got it started for the A's today. Started the game off with a solo home run. Then Cespedes with the solo homer out into the pen. It was a line drive home run. So it's just the eighth two hit loss in franchise history for the Mariners. The last one a few years ago when the year Felix won the Cy Young Award, gave up a 50th home run to Bautista. That was also the game Ichiro got his 200th hit for the 10th consecutive year. 2-1 Athletics. They take two out of three. Next up, the Red Sox beginning tomorrow. Let's go out to center field. Brad and Dave. All right, Dave. Well, Val, we just saw a ninth inning rally come up short. All